In part 1 we learn that cursed blades aren't really cursed, but imbued with Haki, aka spirit. In part 2 we learn that the spirit possessing the sword draws out the spirit of the swordsman. As a result, Deverfoot users could use their power incorporated and enhanced by their swords. Now we're going to learn how our main swordsman Zoro will earn Devil Fruit powers. I personally have never wanted Zoro to get Devil Fruit powers of his own, and still don't. To clarify, I'm referring to him eating the Devil Fruit and having his soul merge with the cursed fruit. However, gaining a Devil Fruit sword, on the other hand, is exactly what I'd like to see. A Devil Fruit sword isn't anything new, nor does it have to be wielded by a master swordsman. Even someone as lame as Spandam can have one. However, Spandam wasn't even really using the weapon because the weapon itself was given life by a zone devil fruit. It is widely believed that zone devil fruits can be utilized by inanimate objects because it will give the lifeless object a consciousness. Without a will of its own, an inanimate object can't activate the devil fruit power in order to use Paramecia or Logia abilities. Or maybe the powers are active but can't be directed for specific use in accordance to the will of the weapon user. But I don't like the idea of Zoro having to settle for his own sword. I'll elaborate why in the secret ending, so let's move on to how it is that a Paramecia or Logia sword could be used. One method I could think of is Cursed Blade. They have a spirit of their own already in them despite being an inanimate object. Thus if they get a Devil Fruit that was a Paramecia then the power could still be activated. Now the question of how could a power be tamed? and utilized needs answers. To start off, it shouldn't be a surprise that it requires a master swordsman to use the double fruit power within the sword. The will of the blacksmith needs to be satisfied before the swordsman can even think of using its power. The skill and conviction being proven to the blade's hockey isn't all that is required because the swordsman needs to acknowledge that there is even a spirit in the blade and then be able to listen, command, and exert the blade's power. This is where the swordsman mastering hockey comes into play. High level observation is required in order to acknowledge the spirit and listen to it. High level armament hockey, also known as Ryo, is necessary to release the power of the Devil Fruit Sword. This is something I'm sure Zoro can accomplish because he knows the breath of all things. The way Hiroguro described Ryo is identical to what Kiyoshiro said in the flashback in which the breath of all things was introduced. It makes sense that Ryo, which is the ability to flow and release, will be used to unleash the Devil Fruit's power within the blade. To make it even more evident is the whole reason it is called the breath of all things in the first place. Zora was able to dodge rocks he couldn't even see. Clearly that falls in the line of observation hockey. However, when observation hockey is used, it's meant to sense and predict in response to the intent of other living beings. So how was it that Zora was able to sense rocks that don't have wills of their own? It's because he can sense the breathing of the rocks. He could sense the breathing of everything around him, whether it was alive or not. Hence why it is called the breathing of all things. I believe that Zora learning to understand the consciousness of a cursed sword will lead him to comprehend the consciousness of any sword. If he were to master the breath of all things, I'm sure he'd be able to use any devil fruit power of a sword even if it wasn't cursed, like the Wado Ichimonji. With all that being said, it presents the obvious question. How would Zoro even get his hands on a Devil Fruit sword or have a Devil Fruit put into the swords he already have? It sure be convenient if Vegapunk just decided to do that for Zoro, but we have no reason to believe that such a thing would happen at this moment. It's possible, but let's not put all our eggs in one basket. What if there is someone else besides Vegapunk, Caesar, or any other scientist that has nothing to do with Zoro? Side note, it would be hilarious if the Germa 66 gave Zoro a special sword just to piss off Sanji. Alright, back on topic. There may have been someone else more relevant to Zoro that could grant him a Double Fruit Sword. Maybe Zoro already has a Double Fruit Sword. The reason I say this is because that someone in Wano knows how to give inanimate objects a Double Fruit. Remember, Hitetsu, the blacksmith that has been impressed with Zoro's swordsmanship, just happens to have a teapot named Bunguku. He or someone he knows gave an inanimate object the Inu Inu no Mi model Tanuki. Perhaps there is a devil already within the Kitetsu that Zoro wields. Call me crazy, but it's almost too convenient to be irrelevant.
Wano is clearly a place for Zoro to develop. Is it just a coincidence that we're learning more about Cursed Swords, Zoro's backstory, Ryo, Breath of All Things, and that someone on the island might be able to give Devil Fruits the sword? Maybe it means nothing, but if it ends up coming true, well you know it wasn't just an ass pull. These videos show the evidence that has been there all along. And with that concludes my Cursed Blade theory. What do you think? Would you love to see Zoro get his own Zanpak toe one day? Thanks for watching. That's it for Food for Thought. I made it short and sweet, but if you'd like to hear me elaborate more, then stick around for the secret ending. We like Food for Thought? Then check out the rest of my channel. Want to see some actually well thought out analysis and theories with a bunch of evidence to back them up? Well then check out my series, Deep Dive. Thanks for watching. In this secret ending, I'm going over how Conqueror's Hockey may have a bigger role in this theory. Next, I'll go over the other time that the story showed an inanimate object being possessed by a spirit. Lastly, I'll brainstorm over what Devil Fruit Swords would be like based off the Devil Fruits we already know of in the story. Bonus, I'll actually create one of my own. Before we get into that, I'd love to show a portion of Case Doflamingo's intro. Don Quixote do Flamingo, an antagonist introduced in chapter 283, finally defeated well over 500 chapters later, and even in the present story, still has lingering effects that persist to be major issues. With that much time and planning dedicated to one character, I believe there's a lot more to be seen of Mr. Don Quixote beyond the surface level. In this case, we're going to be taking a deep dive into Doflamingo, the Don Quixotes, and One Piece at large. One thing I wanted to talk about in the main theory, but would have required me to go off on a tangent, is the possibility of a swordsman needing conqueror's hockey. What I'm referring to is that, in order for a swordsman to actually use the powers of the Logia or Paramecia Devil Fruit within the sword, they'd first need conqueror's hockey. I know that may seem like a bit much, but think about how overpowered it is to just be able to wield a devil fruit without dealing with the risk. First off, the person would still be able to swim despite having access to devil fruit powers. That may not always be the case because the devil fruit object wielder may have also have a devil fruit within their own body. But that leads me to the next overpowered aspect, the ability to stack devil fruit powers. If you already have a devil fruit, and you're using a Devil Fruit Sword, then you'd have two Devil Fruit Powers. And if you're someone like Zoro, then you have the potential to wield three Devil Fruit Powers. Or even four. Hold on a minute. Is that possibly how Blackbeard... Nah, I'm not even gonna go there. Last thing about spirit inhabiting an inanimate object. We have seen this displayed in the story at a crucial and super memorable moment that is not secret. It's very apparent. While it is just my theory that a sword can be possessed by a spirit, there's no room left for speculation when it comes to ships. In the same way I believe we're going to learn the truth about spirited swords from a blacksmith, we learn from a shipwright that ships can also have a will of their own. Frankie confirms that the Going Mary and ships before her have had their own souls. It has been documented and is known as the Klaabout Terman, however you pronounce that. It reminds me of the Cursed Blades and the Black Blades. Curse Blades because it involves a spirit, obviously, but also because the spirit is brought about by the ships being maintained and cared for, loved deeply, which reminds me of what a blacksmith would do for their weapon. It's like the Black Blades because the spirit is brought about gradually over time. While my theory might seem a little far-fetched, there is much precedent in the story to show how it is possible. Now it's time to have some fun with the idea of what Devil Fruit weapons could be like. We're starting with Zone because they already exist in the story, so we have a better point of reference. Now before I actually get into it, I want to go over why I don't want to see Sora get a Zone sword. Well that's not entirely true. I'd be fine with seeing him get one, but I prefer it to be his last one. There are three types of Devil Fruits, and he does have three swords after all. Why I'm least excited to see him get a Zone sword is because it wouldn't suit his fighting style as well and wouldn't display his personal skill as much. He's strong enough by himself, he doesn't really need help from an animal. 
But now that I think about it, he could get a mythical zone sword, which would add special powers to his blade. And it wouldn't be so bad for him to have an ally while he's using two sword style. In fact, that kind of sounds awesome. Didn't give zone swords enough credit at first. Okay, so a zone weapon, as we already seen, can operate all on their own. Meaning, the user doesn't have to be a very skilled fighter. They just need to be the very best, like no one ever was. What would a zone devil fruit do for a skilled warrior such as Zoro? If Zoro had a zone devil fruit and incorporated it into Santorio, give him a variety of possible benefits depending on the animal, such as a sword being able to be tougher, swifter, extended reach, possibly even granting the sword flight. The hockey between sword and master would probably be connected, so whatever heightened senses of the animal that the sword gains, the master probably will as well. An elephant could gain more reach, a bull could add more thrusting strength, a wolf could heighten the senses and killer instinct, a spider zone could possibly produce webs, turn into eight blades, and be venomous. So many possibilities, even more wonderful with the mythical zone. Okay, so let me just go across the mythical zone. We have Marco. The Phoenix Dove Fruit produces flames. It's a bird, so it can fly, and it has regenerative properties. So it's a sword that would probably be able to heal its user, can set things on fire, and itself could probably fly around the place. I mean, that just sounds awesome off the bat. Then you have Sengoku, who Buddha. When you look into hockey, it's all about the spirit. So I can imagine the Buddha Dove Fruit probably makes hockey stronger which would be great for a swordsman and probably wouldn't be too bad to have a Buddha as a partner that fights alongside you. Kaido, dragon, a dragon sword would have super long reach, dragon's breath, dragon's fire. And one thing that'd be cool if you remember Momo, he was able to create clouds that he can step on so I can imagine a sword user that'd be really cool to have. Just a whole bunch of stepping platforms that are cloud. You have the nine-tailed fruit, I think that would be amazing. You'd have probably some kind of whip or something function on the hilt of the sword that could be used for grabbing. That would be the tails of the sword. And the sword itself, well what does the devil fruit of the nine tails do? Well it could transform into different people, so I could imagine a sword that was the nine tails could transform into different weapons. So it probably wouldn't be as powerful as the previous three that I just said, but has crazy amount of versati versatility. And then you have the Yamato no Orochi. I think this one's pretty easy to think. One, it would have reach, really long reach. It'd be fast and nimble like a snake, and it'd be an eight-headed blade, so it'd probably be a sword that can split into eight different blades. I mean, that'd be really cool. But yeah, that about covers it for the zones that I really wanted to talk about. Let's move on to Paramecia. It's hard to pinpoint what a Paramecia sword would be like because a Paramecia could pretty much be anything. So I'll limit myself to focusing on just five Paramecias first and then I can talk about others later. I'm starting off with the Super Super no Mi. This was the first one that came to mind. Initially I thought it would be pretty useless because what are you going to do, turn a sword into more steel? But that's not all that the Super Super no Mi does. It's not that it would be able to change the material of the blade, which would be redundant, but also that it could change the shape. The Super Super Sword would probably be able to grow and branch out other types of weapons. Secondly, the Bara Bara no Mi of Buggy D Clown. The fruit immune to cutting paired up with being a sword itself would end up being a double-edged sword. Of course, I don't mean that literally. Maybe I wasn't the best figure of speech, but my point is, it would be sacrificing defense for more offense. Whenever you use it against other cutting weapons, the broader sword wouldn't be able to defend against another sword because obviously any other sword would go right past the broader broader no mi sword. But this also means that the broader broader no mi sword can go past any defense of any other sword. So it's just a whole bunch of offense and barely any defense. What would be really cool about the Bada Bada no Mi Sword would be the fact that it can separate into many pieces and fly around. For those who know of Bleach, there's a character named Byakuya. Think about the Zenbon Sakura. A sword blade scattering and following its opponent is so powerful and threatening. The Hanahana no Mi of Robin. 
Like I said with the Super Super no Mi, the Hana Hana no Mi could also branch out the blade and extend itself. However, it'd be much more powerful in this scenario because not only would the blade shapeshift, it could also sprout off and spawn in far distances, this making the blade both a close range and long range ability. Then add the fact that full body clones are possible to make, thus two sword style and higher is now accessible. Finally, Robin has the ability to make giant arms, so the sword would have the ability to make giant blade. How I'd imagine a sword master wielding a Hanahana sword would use it is in two phases. A sheathed form, as implied the sword is still in its scabbard, however the blade can sprout out of the sword master's body. That's when all of its abilities are released. I think it'd be cool if the unsheathed version is mistaken for a sword master having the super super no mi or other similar fruits. The fourth one I want to talk about is the Kage Kage no Mi. To start off, it can cut shadows, which at daytime would disintegrate the opponent and at nighttime would at least knock them out. Then the sword itself can have its own shadow clone, which would allow for two sword style. Even in one sword style, manipulation of the shadow would manipulate the physical shape of the sword. So once again allows for shape shifting swords. It can absorb shadows. It could also gain strength by absorbing other shadows. Talk about a whole new way to forge a black sword. And I'm sure because the sword master is holding the Kage Kage no Mi sword, their own shadow will be manipulated as well. Have you seen Soul Eater? In it, a character named Blackstar has a partner that it also happens to be his sword. The sword can manipulate his shadow. Not going off topic, but shout out to Shadow Star. The fifth one I'll make up myself. I'll call it the Kage Kage no Mi. Wait, didn't we just do that? Oh, okay, it's called the Koge Koge no Mi, and them sounding similar is just a coincidence. It means Scorch Scorch Fruit. Now, you might be thinking One Piece already has enough fire like devil fruits, but I promise this one's different. Since I'm making up a fruit, I might as well make up a Swordsmaster. Her name will be Hotspur, and she's a knight of whatever the British Kingdom is called in One Piece. She's in full body armor, so is often mistaken for the man, and that's enough for her backstory. The Scorch Scorch Fruit is similar to the character from My Hero Academia named Tenya, and his quirk is known as Engine. Engine grants Tenya engine-like protrusions somewhere on his body to allow him to move at extraordinary speeds. In Tenya's case, the engine-like protrusions appear in a specific location. However, this devil fruit can create mufflers anywhere on the body, or in this case, the sword. The devil fruit is pretty straightforward. It allows speed and flight. It's one of those devil fruits that are C tier because it only does one thing, but is really good at what it does. An example of this is Bellamy's Spring Devil Fruit. It's not as versatile as the Gamu Gamu no Mi, which is also springy, but it's at least the best at being the spring. An even better example of this is Leo's Stitch Stitch Fruit. Clearly Doflamingo's String Spring Devil Fruit is better overall, but not only is Leo's Devil Fruit better at stitching, it's one that is suited for Leo given his size and speed. This is a devil fruit great for a sword. The engine powered slices and thrusts will have much more force behind them, and the mufflers can point in any direction allowing for immediate change in direction of any swing of the blade. The mufflers can be small or large. In battle, the sword usually uses a bunch of minuscule jets on the blade, which makes it appear as if the sword itself is on fire. The sword can be thrown at great velocities and accelerate even after leaving Hotspur's hand. Since the sword has a will of its own, it can fly and become a missile. That covers most of what it does unsheathed. When it is sheathed, it's strapped to the back of the knight, and in that state, the sword becomes a jetpack. Hotspur already uses jets in her armor. The jetpack just allows her to fly at a supersonic speed. Alright, let's have a lightning round and just go down the list of Paramus shields. So we have the Gomu Gomu no Mi. Obviously, that would make the fruit uh, have extra reach, but Rubber's kind of soft, so it wouldn't be that great for a sword. Maybe a hammer, or just a staff. We have the bottom of me, already went over that. Slip slip fruit. Um, I don't see how that really help a weapon be all that offensive. I don't have anything. A bomb bomb fruit, I mean, I think that's pretty self-explanatory of what it would do for a weapon, just make things explode. Pretty simple. Kilo kilo to me, again, very simple. It will just make your weapon heavier or lighter. That would be powerful, but it's kind of a boring one. There you go. That, the wax wax fruit. I mean, would this do that much for weapons? 
I don't think it'd be all that great for a weapon to have the wax wax fruit. Don't get me wrong, it's powerful in the hands of a human, but a weapon doesn't add that much to it. The munch munch fruit. Okay, now this would actually be kind of cool. You could eat things with your weapon, and then it would empower the weapon. So the weapon will get more powerful based off what it eats. The question is, how do you make a weapon eat? Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure the munch munch fruit would probably give a weapon teeth. We have the spike spike fruit. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. It just grows spikes on the weapon. You, you just make a weapon more spikier. Cage cage fruit, you can use a weapon to shackle people. Spring spring fruit, that would be cool. Just make a sword be really coiled and then you just let it release and then it could probably turn a simple sword into like a sniper with that. Rust rust sword, that would definitely be powerful. Pretty boring because it's self-explanatory, just rust things, but it would definitely be powerful if a sword had the rust rust fruit. Wheel wheel fruit, I don't even remember that one. But uh, put a wheel on some sword or some kind of weapon, I guess. You could turn like a cannon into a tank. The arrive arrive fruit, that doesn't make sense to give a weapon because it doesn't have life to begin with. But maybe it gives it life, I don't know. Paw paw fruit allows you to. Yeah, that, that, that'd be weapon, I mean, that'd be effective. To give like a shield, the paw paw fruit, it'd be invincible or even like a hammer or something blunt object castle castle fruit you could have a weapon that has a bunch of weapons already in that one weapon you could put people in your weapon yeah that'd be pretty insane you could take shelter inside of your own weapon okay, the straw star fruit we kind of already seen what that would be like the love fruit i mean how do you you'd have to have a weapon so beautiful i don't know that seems weird poison fruit yeah that'd be cool Super powerful, pretty self-explanatory. The snip snip fruit, I mean that's like beyond explanatory what that would do. Making diamond weapons would be cool. The arms arms fruit would obviously be awesome. You can have any weapon you want, really. Spin spin fruit, yeah, you, you can make drills. Pop pop fruit, you can make things explode. The mirror mirror fruit would actually be kind of cool. Because you could have a reflective surface in your sword and you use that as a weapon and stuff. Alright, this is getting boring. <laughs> Moving on. Now, on to Logius. How I imagine this works is that the sword can become intangible and shapeshift, just like a normal Logio user. This allows the sword to be concealed in super secretive ways. Let's say someone has a Meta Meta no Mi sword. I could just imagine a ball of fire being kept, and when the sword is activated, it turns into a normal blade. Or maybe the fire floats around him kind of like King. Logi's swords are pretty straightforward. A fire sword, a light sword, an ice sword, all those many swords. In fact, many Logi users just create swords with their powers already. Like half of these people here already do that. A smoke smoke sword, I mean, I guess the only cool thing about that is you make a smoke screen. Not much to do, but whatever. Crocodile sand, sword actually would be really cool because the sword can like turn into minuscule pieces that brings me back to what i was talking about with byakuya from bleach so and you could also dehydrate people so a sand sword would actually be really cool fire sword yeah kind of boring in my opinion but you know be super powerful lightning sword obviously would be super cool ice sword would be powerful a dark sword huh that'd be interesting dark sword i'm not really sure how that would work and I don't feel like brainstorming that. Light sword seems pretty explanatory. It'd be like lasers and shooting beams. Lava sword would obviously be super destructive. A lava hammer would probably be cooler than a lava sword. Mud sword, um, the only cool thing about that would be being able to suck people into the sword. I don't know, you could probably find a better object than a sword if you're gonna use this devil fruit. Air sword, uh, the cool thing about that is you could probably set it on fire, kind of like what Caesar already does to make his own sword. And you could probably incorporate some kind of wind slash. An ice sword, doesn't seem all that lethal or threatening. And then, yeah, fire sword, whatever. But yeah, please, let me know what you think. All the creative ideas you could come up with these Devil Fruit Swords. I'd love to hear it. Thank you so much if anyone's made it this far. It was a great ride. And I still have one more video to make about Brooke. And, of course, catch Case Doflamingo. That's going to be a really good video. 
Goodbye.